Welcome to Adobe InDesign CS3 Lesson 5, working with typography and a baseline grid. First we're going to open the Lesson 5 file, 08 underscore A, and then we can view fit spread in window to have a look at the, the file we're going to be working with. We're now going to file save as and save this file as 05 underscore report dot indd and save it in our workspace in this case my documents folder we'll choose save Now we're going to go to Layout, Margins and Columns and set the margins and columns. So we set the top margin to 6P0. Or check that it's the top margin, 6P0. We're going to cancel that and use this. Uh, when we set the grid. We're going to check the leading on our page, which is 14 point, by looking in the control panel. And if we go to Preferences, Grids, we can use those measurements that we just checked. So we're going to set the baseline grid to start at 6.P0 and increment every 1p0, 1 pica 0, uh, 2 point or 14 point and set the view threshold to 100% below which the grid would not be visible. And we click OK. Now if we want to view the baseline grid, we go to the view menu check that we're fitting spread in window and then go to grids and guides and choose show baseline grid. Now we need to zoom to at least 100% to view it. That's the setting we just made. Now if we use the text tool on page one of our document and choose edit select all having clicked in the text we can use the control panel at the top of the page to click the uh, fit to grid base fit to baseline grid option now if we click in the pull quote at the side of the page we can do the same to align that to the baseline grid and we can now save. If we click in the second paragraph on the page and go to the space after option in the control panel and enter 1 pica 2, this forces the headline, the Northeast Tour Group Partnership text to move down to the next point in the grid. Now if we click within that text and type in this space before option of 0 pica 6 we can see that it will now jump down again to another line of the grid. But if we make it uh, not aligned to the baseline grid it fits neatly into the space between the paragraphs. Now also if we go to the paragraph styles option and redefine the paragraph style of that heading so that head one now reflects the settings we've just made. We want to apply the same settings to our newest packages Heading, we click in the heading, go to the paragraph styles, 
and click head one and it now reflects the settings we made. Now if we go to the text tool click in the pull quote and do choose select all from the edit menu change the control panel to the character options and set the text font to Adobe Caslon Pro semi bold italic which is alphabetically C and not A as it might logically seem so it's Caslon is the font and set the size to 15 point Note that the text is still um, aligned to the baseline grid. Now if we select the first character of the pull quote, the letter W, and go to the menu and choose Type, Glyphs, we can choose Alternate characters for that uh, letter. So if we go for the ornamental W that will replace the uh, standard W that we already had. And we can close the glyphs panel. If we choose View, Grids and Guides, Hide Lake, Baseline Grid, we can now switch the control panel to the Paragraph Options. And with these uh, paragraph alignments set to justified and the insertion point at the end of the paragraph, we can choose an ornamental character. So if we go to the glyphs panel and choose ornaments, you can see that there's a range of ornamental characters that we could insert. And we can choose one of uh, that suits our purpose and then close that panel and choose file save with the type tool between the period at the end of the paragraph and the new ornament if we right click we can choose insert white space and flush space which will tidy up the spacing in our paragraph. Now with the type tool in the first paragraph of the page, we can create a drop cap character. In the control panel we can choose uh, to type 4 for the drop cap number of lines and we will get a drop cap character with the letter T in that first paragraph. If we change the value from 1 to 3 in the drop cap one or more characters box we can extend the drop cap to as many characters as we wish, in this case three. In the character formatting panel
panel or character formatting controls we can change the font for that drop cap uh, word in this case to Adobe Caslon Pro and semi bold style, semi bold italic. If we now select the first two characters, the T and the H, and go to type glyphs we can replace those characters with alternates that are available in this open type typeface. So if we look at alternates for selection and we can choose a character which is the TH conjoined together as a single glyph. So we've now closed the glyphs panel. Now with the type tool we can select all three characters of our drop cap and go to the swatches panel and if we click on the outline stroke Color and scroll down to Pantone Reflex Blue C for coated. That text will be outlined in blue. And if we go to the fill option, we're selecting black here. The text will be filled with black. If we now go to stroke, we can change the thickness of the line so we change the weight by choosing from the pull down menu 2 and then changing typing over that to 1.5 point we'll have a stroke around our letters If we want to change the black and the blue around, we can click in the top of the palette to switch the colours. So that the blue is now the fill colour. Now with the text tool, you can select the drop cap. And from the control panel menu at the top of the screen on the right we can choose drop caps and nested styles and choose a line left edge. If we preview that we'll see that the drop cap will move closer to the left hand margin. If we can switch preview on and off to see the effect. We close the panel and with the zoom tool we'll zoom in to our drop cap, close the swatches panel. With the insertion point between the H and the E we can adjust the spacing of those characters by pressing option left to move the E if we wanted to and move it nearer the H. And with the insertion point next to the letter K of key, we can press option R to move the four lines of the drop cap away from the drop cap itself. Press this as many times as you need to to make an aesthetically pleasing result.